Hi, personal health and wellness. Welcome to chapter three, the cardio respiratory system and how you condition it. We are going to look for the next three chapters at the simple interventions that you can make to prolong your life by preventing disease and uh, uh, creating an ability to go throughout your day with moderate to vigorous activities without undue fatigue. And so when we look at this first step, cardiorespiratory endurance, many of us kind of quiver and, and, and we think this is not really something I want to do because that means running, that means uh, riding a bike, that means stair climbers, all these kind of torturous things that we kind of think about when we think of exercise. But what I hope that we do is we walk away from this chapter understanding that because of the intensity of cardiorespiratory endurance or cardiorespiratory exercise, um, it's really quite the simplest of exercises to do. Um, and so let's see if we can kind of make that make sense. But first, let's talk about some of the physiological components behind cardiorespiratory exercise. And you have heard this term before, cardio, and so you immediately know it has to do with the heart. But even more than that, we need to think this has to do with oxygen. And this oxygen component to exercise is critical. And so when we think about oxygen, we have to understand that yes, the heart is a pump. It pumps blood through our body. That blood has to be oxygenated. And it gets its oxygenation by pumping through first the lungs, then returning to the heart, then out the left ventricle and into the body. Now, your blood is a very important component, and it's affected by a lot of things, whether you're hydrated or not, whether you're sweating. Um, all of these things are crucial to your blood, um, and also your blood pressure. Um, it can be affected by so many of uh, the things that we do, both internally and externally, as a person. And so when we consider these, we need to look at these as how they um, modify with exercise and then how we make adaptations after long-term exercise. In slide two, I want to discuss the second physiological component, and that is bioenergetics. And you've probably heard this term before if you've been in a physiology class, but bioenergetics is how we develop energy. The human body cannot create its own energy. It must consume a fuel source, and that is typically food or carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, the big macronutrients. And as we consume that food source, then we can create energy from it. Now, this comes in three very distinct but also continuous fashions. And the first is ATPPC. Your muscle right now is loaded with this stuff called ATPPC. It is ready to give that muscle group energy on demand. The thing is, is it only lasts for about 10 to 30 seconds because it's kept locally. There's not very much of it. And so when we use it, maybe say to get up and run from a bear that just entered our classroom, we're going to use it very quickly. But fortunately, we fall into the second energy system called glycolysis. Well, glycolysis gets its name from glycogen, which comes from glucose, which is the name of things that we eat called carbohydrates. And so as we consume those, we're using those sugars, if you will, to convert over and then store them in the liver and the muscle. And then therefore we have a secondary system to fall onto. This system though is very short as well. It only goes from about 30 seconds to two minutes. And then we have to start looking for a larger energy system. And so I started this video by talking to you about how the intensity of cardiorespiratory exercise is lower and therefore easier to maintain. Well, this is where we kind of get the physiology to back that statement up. And that is oxidative phosphorylation. This is a much bigger energy system, but it needs oxygen. So it is the only one of the three that is aerobic. The other two are anaerobic, do not really need oxygen. And this one can last anywhere from three minutes to several hours. And that is kind of the premise of intensity. Because as we go through this, what we're going to understand is intensity and duration or how long you exercise they have an inverse relationship. If one goes up, the other must come down. So let's look at slide three and let's consider cardiorespiratory system 
at rest during exercise? Well, and, and during exercise. Well, first of all, our homeostasis is about 50 to 90 beats per minute. That, that means our heart rate is going 50 to 90 beats per minute, and that's average. If you're somewhere in the middle, good for you. The kind of key or uh, optimal level of heart rate is around 60, but our text will tell us that 50 is even better, and I would agree with that. However, there are some caveats that we need to consider with that. Now, it says that our optimal blood pressure is around 120 over to 80. So here's our normative values for heart rate as well as blood pressure. And the good news is these two things get better with exercise because the more you work your heart and your lungs, the better they are at doing their job. In fact, what we know is that the heart rate of a person who has exercised with aerobic or cardiorespiratory exercise for 10 to 12 weeks will notice substantial decrease in their resting heart rate. So say your heart rate was 75 or 80, you do three months worth of cardiorespiratory exercise, you might see it in the 60s consistently at your resting heart rate. And what does that mean? That means our heart is now more efficient. It's pumping the same amount of blood. And that amount of blood is the next statement here. It's called your cardiac output. It's literally a volume of blood that goes through your heart in one minute. On average, it's about five liters. And to put that in perspective, we all know what a two liter of soda looks like from the store. Well, you need two and a half of those and then make it into blood. And that's what's going through your heart on average per minute. And so what happens here is our heart gets so much better at producing the needed cardiac output that it just goes down because it's that much stronger. And so that's a huge benefit. A, because your heart's not having to work that hard. And then B, you get better blood pressure as well. So the next slide, we'll talk about how our aerobic training condition or how to how does aerobic training condition my cardiorespiratory system? Well, first of all, there are three big things in your text that it discusses. It increases oxygen delivery to your muscle. That means when you get more blood pumping, that means more oxygen gets to go, right? And so if more oxygen goes to that muscle, it gets easier. And a lot of people kind of fear starting a running or a cycling program because they say, it's really hard. My legs get tired. My lungs get tired. I really get out of breath. Well, listen, that improves, but it takes some time, right? And, and what our research is telling us is 10 to 12 weeks. It also improves oxygen transfer in your muscle. So not only are we getting more oxygen to the muscle, we're actually getting it in and out of the muscle faster. And then the third thing, it improves our ability to use energy. So of those three energy systems, ATPPC, glycolysis, and oxidative phosphorylation, this whole thing is improved by simply staying consistent with our cardiorespiratory training. Next slide talks about what are the benefits of improving my cardiorespiratory fitness. Well, we've already talked about what happens to your heart rate and your blood pressure, but take a look at this. We know that there is a disease risk decrease. And by that, what we have seen in the, in the tons of studies out there is that between metabolic disorders like diabetes, uh, chronic illness like COPD and osteoporosis, as well as cancer, have all been decreased if a person uses aerobic exercise or cardiorespiratory exercise consistently through their lifespan, especially outside of high school and moving forward into adulthood. This is a pinnacle time for you to adopt habits of good, healthy behaviors. And so what we hope that you understand is that your best chance to prevent those diseases is by performing aerobic as well as strength training exercise, but we're not going to get our head of ourselves yet. Number two, helps you control body weight and body composition. Now, if you scour the internet, what you'll find is a great debate out there over whether aerobic conditioning is better exercise for controlling weight or if strength training with weights is better for controlling weight. I'm not going to try to end that debate today. What I want you to do is go out there and find out for yourself. Again, I would tell you the best exercise is the one that you will consistently do. So whatever you're going to do of the two, do it. If you're going to do both, fantastic. We love to hear that because you're the most consistent with those principles that we talked about in chapter two. Moving forward to number three, 
It helps self-esteem, mood, and sense of well-being. This is something that is crucial to all of us. We can say that we don't have a problem with self-esteem, but our actions and behaviors will say otherwise. And maybe you don't notice that because you're intentional about not seeing that, but everyone else does. And you would know that about me, that I have the same problems, and I would know that about you because we're human and that's that's just the truth. And so as we exercise, it can improve that self-esteem and confidence. And what better way could we see ourselves transitioning through adulthood and mat maturing than that right there? Number four, it improves the immune function. Now, some of us are sick all the time and we would probably debate that nothing is ever going to fix that except for a medication. I'm going to debate with you otherwise and say, no, 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 we can fix that. We can do things that will help with our immune function. And that starts with aerobic conditioning. If you are sick all the time, I would probably say there's probably some other deficiencies there, but let's start with exercise and let's see what happens. And then the fourth or fifth thing improves long-term quality of life. Now, we haven't probably considered this as college students yet, but we only have so many years of good quality life. Some people have less than others, and that is really something that can be prevented. And when I say quality of life, I'm talking about things that um, may not be quite as noticeable yet, like you're able to live at home alone. You're able to go to the bathroom unassisted. You're able to drive a car. You're able to do your own grocery shopping, house cleaning, recreational things, all independently. And the more we keep with the components and principles of these three chapters, the longer we can do that on our own. Eventually, we're all going to need help. That's something that we know is coming. We have grandparents or great grandparents, or we've seen that in other people. And so we know that that's coming. But wouldn't you like the opportunity to make that as long as possible? In the next slide, we are looking at how can I create my own cardiorespiratory fitness program? Well, one thing that I will continue to say throughout the course is make your goals smart. They have to be specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-oriented. And when you make your goals smart, what you find is that they can occur. A lot of times we get unrealistic goals and then we get frustrated because they don't happen. Well, here is some of the things that we can look at. Uh, first of all, what are your options? Um, you have to evaluate what your options are locally. Um, and different people will live in different geographical areas and have different opportunities. If you lived in Colorado, you would have trails or what you would think trails everywhere. But I would tell you, if you live in LaFleur County, you have trails everywhere. Those, the, the Ouachita National Forest is literally scoured with hiking trails and they're free access trails. You don't have to pay to use them. And the other side of this is there are running trails right here in Poto that are free to use. And so when we are talking about cardiorespiratory exercise, I have to mention our free resources. Um, I'm not going to tell you to go run on the streets all the time because there's inherent dangers to that. And, and most of that has to do with motor vehicles and texting and driving or possibly drunk driving. But what we know is that if you get off on a trail, there's less likelihood of in even seeing a, another person or even a car. But, you know, you might see some wildlife, but encounters with wildlife are pretty rare. Um, indoor workouts are another option. What does that mean? That means you're probably looking at things like stationary bikes, uh, spin classes, uh, also treadmills and ellipticals. They have really come a long way with these machines and what they can do for a person. And so these are also some of the things that we can do. But I would go with that third bullet there and say, if you can get outdoors, do it. You're going to get vitamin D. You're going to get fresh air. You're going to experience things about this world and creation that are just amazing. So please access those free times and free places. Um, the next thing is your workout format. Um, and this is probably one of the most critical things here. Um, and we're going to talk more at, in depth about these here in just a minute. But are you going to do a continuous workout where you just do a rhythmic activity uh, for a long period of time? Are you going to do an interval where you do kind of some short bursts of high intensity stuff with some short 
opportunities for rest, or are you going to do a circuit where you have different stations and you get to move to? These are your formats, and, and again, I'm going to talk about that here in just a few minutes, but I'd like to you for you to think about what is it that works best? Well, continuous is absolutely the best exercise for uh, uh, cardiorespiratory uh, conditioning. So if you have a heart issue or you're trying to fight against having a heart issue because your parents have one, then that's your option that you would want to use. If you're looking at weight loss, interval or circuit is the way to go. And that's just what the data tells us. Um, and so you can think about this when you do go out and you scour that internet and you find that the debate is there of which is better, should a person do cardio or should a person do weights? Well, you should do them both. And if you keep them interval or circuit, you can make a weight workout cardio just by making it interval or circuit. And I have some great uh, connections. If you have questions, please let me know and I can hook you up with that. Um, our next slide is how can I assess my cardiorespiratory fitness? Well, you have to think about your heart rate and what your max heart rate is. And I am going to kill it right there.